Hello, my name is Burnaby, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make not one, but two different microphones using an old rotary telephone, and how to use the rotary as a tremolo so you can do things like this. Besides a telephone, you'll need one double pull, double throw switch. It's also known as an on on switch two input-output jacks. I'll be using quarter-inch jacks, but you can use whatever you have. Some wire, a wire stripper, solder, a soldering iron, and one AA battery holder, plus a battery for it to hold, also AA, a drill, and a drill bit that's as wide as your jacks and on-on switch. I'll be using a step drill for this. Some things that are nice to have but you don't necessarily need would be heat shrink tubing for securing your solder connections, tweezers for hard to reach areas, and alligator clips for testing connections. You can just use a piece of wire for this though if you'd like. You'll also need a screwdriver, I'll be using my multi-tool for this, and here's a list of everything you'll need in case you want to take a screenshot. To start, you're going to remove the screws on the bottom of the telephone base so that we can pop off the top and take a look inside. Keep in mind that not all telephones are wired exactly the same. It can vary depending on the decade and country that your phone is from, but the general concepts I'll be showing you in this video should still apply. Here we can see there's many different cables connected to various points throughout the telephone. We'll be tapping into those in a bit. The easiest way to use a telephone as a microphone is to use the earpiece. Here we can see that the earpiece is connected to two white cables, and the great thing about the earpiece is that it doesn't require any power in order for it to work. All you have to do is connect the jack to those two white cables. If that's all you want to do, then you can remove the phone's cord and the mouthpiece and replace them with an input jack connected to those two white cables. House it all in the mouthpiece and you can plug straight into it. That's it, you're done. But if you want to keep the phone intact and use the entire base, you can follow those two white cables and tap into wherever they lead to. Let's test it by connecting two alligator clips to an output jack and plugging that into a speaker that's just off screen. The other ends of the alligator clips will be connected to whatever the two white cables from the earpiece are leading to. The rotary is just pressure fitted in with two screws, loosen them up a bit and it should pop right off. We'll put it off to the side for now and come back to it later. For now we're going to follow the two white cables from the earpiece and connect our alligator clips to wherever they lead. So now we can test it. Turn the volume up. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, not working. What if I switch these? Hello. Testing, 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 one, two, three. So tapping into the two white wires works, but we also want to use the rotary. So let's try and get the same signal, by this time tapping into the wires connected to the rotary. And the way this rotary works is there are these two metal strips here at the bottom that are constantly touching. But whenever you dial a number on the rotary, those two strips momentarily disconnect on the rotary's way back to the resting position. The goal here is to take advantage of this feature and incorporate it into our signal flow. That way, whenever we use a rotary, we can momentarily disconnect the audio signal. To do that, we're going to be adding an input jack. For the actual build, I'll be using a quarter inch jack, but for this experiment, I'll be using an eighth inch jack so that I can play music from my phone. I'm going to poke around with the alligator clips, and once we can hear music, we know that it's working. And I'll be using my own music for this for copyright reasons. I'm going to connect this one to uh, right here, where the green is coming from. And this ground one can stay right here. Okay, cool. We hear music. Let's see if this does anything. Okay, so the music is cutting out when that's going. What if we connected this somewhere else? I'm just gonna poke around until we hear music. Okay, this one. It's cutting. There we go. All right. So let me pause this really quick. The way I have this wired up right now is. So I'm editing the video right now and I realized that I didn't do the best job explaining this section. So I created this illustration to hopefully help. 
The important information that you need to know is that in order to have the rotary work as a tremolo, you need to have the input ground connected to the rotary and the output ground connected to it as well. So if there's two wires coming out of the rotary, one of them is going to be connected to the input ground and the other one is going to be connected to the output ground. The actual line signal on where that goes matters slightly less. That could be connected anywhere on the phone. I say just experiment and see. But what's important is that the input ground passes through the rotary and goes to the output ground. So now if I'm playing music, it's not disconnecting when I dial, but it does create a tremolo. So there it is. Let's go over using the mouthpiece now. This piece here is what's known as a carbon microphone, and I don't know exactly what that means, but I do know that it requires power in order to work. Here you can see it's connected to a red wire and a black wire. We're gonna be connecting these two wires to a battery and using the switch in order to turn it on and off. Connect a positive wire from the battery holder to a prong on either end of the switch and add a new wire to the center prong. Follow the mouthpiece cables to whatever they're connected to and then connect the ground of the battery holder to the same location that the ground from the mouthpiece is connected to. It's usually a black cable. Next, we're going to connect the new wire that's connected to the center of the switch to the positive wire coming from the mouthpiece. Let's pop a battery in, flip the switch, and test it out. Hello, testing. This is what the bottom microphone sounds like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back to the top. One, two, three. And back to the bottom. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that we know everything works, we can begin to make these connections permanent and solder them together. Using different colored cables can help you tell things apart at a glance, but it isn't really necessary, so just use whatever you have. I like to add a bit of solder to the tip of my iron before making the connection. I find that it helps the solder melt and pull into the right direction. Cleaning your iron after each use helps the solder flow smoothly as well. Heat shrink tubing can help secure your connections, but it's really not necessary. If you do decide to do it though, just gently rub your iron all across the tubing and it'll start to shrink. At this point, we can begin to remove the alligator clips one at a time and replace each one with its corresponding wire. It's a good idea to document your connection somehow, that way if you do mess up, you can always go back and reference your work. A good pair of tweezers would come in handy for small cramped spots like this one, but again, it's not necessary, just take your time. Once everything has been connected, we can begin figuring out where the holes for the jacks and switch will go. Make sure the components are far enough from one another so that they have enough space on the inside. The layout I went with here was the input and microphone switch on one side and the output on the other. I like to use a step drill for making the holes because it allows me to make different sized holes without having to switch out the bit. So here I'm just drilling and testing the size every now and then and I do this for each component while I'm drilling. Now we can start assembling the phone again. Even though the enclosure is pretty small, I like to make sure that the wires I add are long enough for me to comfortably be able to work on this while the lid's fully removed. Tighten the screws on the bottom and voila, you're done. Now all that's left to do is test it out. So right now I have the OP1 field connected to the telephone and the audio is passing through that on its way to a pair of speakers just off screen. I'm gonna play something I recorded on here and let's see if it works. Okay, so we can hear the audio. Pretty cool, pretty cool. 
and see if the rotary works. It sounds pretty good. Telephone is also working. And it's not affected by the rotary either, so you can keep talking while the tremolo is only affecting the audio passing through it. Pretty cool. This is what the bottom microphone sounds like. Personally, I think the top one sounds better, but this one's cool too. It just, you know, different use case, I guess. The rotary is pretty cool and a lot of fun to play with. I can see it being useful like in a performance type of setting. This here is one of my favorite chords. E flat six. It's a nice sound. It's just a fun little embellishment. I think it would be cool to house this separately. Maybe I'll do that in a separate video with a different phone. But for this video, that's gonna be it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And yeah, take care, bye.